Welcome to this tutorial video. Today we'll be looking at Dijkstra's algorithm. It's a comp new component in the VCE course for further maths. Dijkstra's algorithm is used to find the shortest path between two vertices in a network or a graph. It was uh, designed by a Mr. Dijkstra in uh, 1956 and an algorithm like all algorithms are used in mathematics and in computer programming to provide a step-by-step -step separate operations uh, to perform a particular outcome. So let's have a look. The task for today is to use Dijkstra's algorithm to determine the shortest path between vertices A and E in the below graph. So you can see here we've got one, two, three, four, five different vertices and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different edges. And each edge has a number and we refer to that as a weight. In this particular example, the numbers represent kilometers of distance uh, separating each vertex. By inspection, you can see that the shortest path is from a to C to D to E and it has a total weighting of 28 kilometers so we can find the shortest path just by inspecting looking at the network or a graph however sometimes that's more challenging when you have many different combinations of edges and vertices available so we go to Dijkstra's algorithm to guarantee we get the correct outcome so if we were to do this using Dijkstra's algorithm we need to construct the network table and you can see we have A, B, C, D, E the five different vertexes or vertices um, at the top of our table in columns and A, B, C, D, E, the five of them along the side in our rows. So let's look at the steps used to perform Dijkstra's algorithm. So first of all from this diagram we can see there's no loops, there's no edge going from A to A or from B to B. So we place an X through the main diagonal of this table so there is nothing that joins A to A, B to B, C to C, D to D and E to E. Then we go through and we fill it out. So between vertex A and B, A and B we have 16, but also from B to A we have 16. This will end up being a symmetrical um, table with uh, di oppositely diagonal um, values being represented on both sides. So A to B and B to A. From A to C we have an 8 kilometre edge, B to C is 9, B to D is 10, C to D is 6, D to E is 14 and finally B to E is 15. So that's our network table complete and as I said you have a main diagonal with no values and there are symmetrical um, data points entered in uh, around that main diagonal. It's as if you could fold that from diagonal to diagonal and you get like a, a print one of the other. Uh, you notice also values here where there's no values entered in at all, cells with no numbers, and that's because A is not linked to D and A is not linked to E as you can see from our, our diagram. Next step is to place a zero above our end or destination E. So above column E we place a zero. And we examine uh, the edges that are connected to E. So from E to B it has a weighting of 15, so E to B is 15. And what we do is we place that number above column B. So E to B, there's an edge with a weighting of 15, and we write that number above B. Likewise, from E to D, there's a number 14, and that's represented on our graph here. And so we also write the 14 above column D, because it's representing the connection between E to D. That's the first step done. And that's the end of all possible edges in E, so we're finished with column E. So, let's now have a look. We look at uh, the two numbers we have here, and we next select the column with the lowest number. So the column with the lowest total is column D. That's selected. We then look at the values in D. So from D to B, from D to B, there's a total of 10. But I'm interested in the shortest path from the initial value or position of E all the way back to A. So to get to D we've already taken 14 from E. So 14 plus 10, so to get from E to B is the sum of the 14 plus 10 on B, that gives me 24. And you can see the 14 plus 10 gives me 24. So that's another alternative way to get from E to B, to go from E to D to B. However we can see that 15 is the shorter distance and that's what we're after, the shortest uh, possible pathway from A to E. So we don't actually use the 24, it's not the shortest distance. 
So we see here down below, path E, D to B has a total of 24, which is the sum of 14 already, plus 10. However, because E to B already has a shorter pathway of 15, we don't consider this one. Likewise, we look at 14 being added to the 6. So from D to C, the sum of 14 to 6 gives me 20. So we can go from E to D and then D to C at this stage with a path of waiting 20. And that's the only one we've got that gets to C at this stage. So we place the 20 above column C. Again, the 14 plus 6 means from D to E, uh, sorry, D to C rather, from D to C, the total from our starting position E will be 14 plus 6 gives us 20. Finally, from D to E, D could go back to E, but that's pointless. We don't have any purpose to actually want to go back from where we've already been, so we don't consider that as an option at all. So at this point, we've looked at the options from E to D, and we've examined um, both of those. As it currently stands, getting from E to D, 14 is our shortest weighted path. From E to C, 20 is our shortest possible path. And from E to B, 15 is our shortest possible path. However, there's other combinations we haven't examined yet. So again, we look at the smallest number of those that have left. So 15 is our smallest number. Now we'll look at these, this column of B. So we add 15 to 16. So from B to A, we get a total weighting of 31. So here it is. We've already got 15 from E to B, and now we're adding 16 to get to A. That gives a total weighting of 31. At the moment, that is the only path we've analysed yet that gets us from E to B to A. And so we write that number above column A. Likewise, we move down. From B to C, there's 9. So from B to C, we can add a 9. So in total, from E to get to C, we can go 15 plus 9 gives us 24. 15 plus 9 gives us 24. However, we've already, as you can see in the green here, got to C from E via E, D and C for 20. So because that num's, number is higher, we ignore it and we leave 20 as our best or shortest pathway to get to C. Finally, we can look at B to D. Well, not finally. We can also look at B to D. B to D, you can see here, we can already get to D via 14. So that number um, is not of any use to us because 15 plus 10 uh, is 25. And we've already established the shortest path from E to D earlier in this first particular column. Likewise, from B back to E, there's no point going back on the same edge if we're trying to get our shortest distance to A. So that's the B column complete. Next we look at our shortest number of the columns available and 20 in column C is our next shortest number. So let's consider the combinations. So C to A there is an 8. Okay, So we have 20 at the moment plus another 8 gives us from E all the way to A a weighting of 28 kilometres. Now that's a shorter path than the previous E to B to A that was 31. So we rub that out and we replace it with a 28 as our current shortest path from E all the way to A. We've already established this C to B, a value of 29. C to B, okay, um, we've already established an earlier pathway to get from E to B. There would be no point really going E to D to C back to B. Gives a total of 29. Uh, when we've already got there with a 15 earlier, so that's pointless. And likewise, um, we've already established a shortest path from E to D. There is no point going from E to D to C and then back to D. Um, yeah, so that one is pretty self-explanatory as well. So that's the end of column C. And now we've left A. Now we've already examined A to B previously and A to C previously. So we're actually left with the shortest joining pathway of A to E is 28, as shown in our table. Now we've already worked that out earlier via inspection, but this is the end of the Dijkstra algorithm to guarantee we've found the shortest pathway. Finally, just having a quick look, we can see here that on the top the numbers we have, 14 is the shortest possible distance from D to E, as we can see here. 
20 is the shortest possible distance from E to C. Okay, if we go E to D to C, that's 14 plus 6 is 20. 15 is the shortest possible path length from E to B. E to B is 15. And finally, 28 is the shortest possible path length from E to A, where we went 14 to D, 6, which gives us 20 to C, plus a final 8 that gives us 28 to A. Dijkstra's algorithm is confusing at first, but if you take your time and work through it and follow the steps, it should be very useful with the more complex networks and pathways. I hope this has helped, and thanks for watching.